Hello, good morning. And uh, today I'm going to present um, my licentious thesis um, in human detection and tracking the Doppler Weidmann radar. Yeah, of course. <laughs> ah, I'm taking this. Uh, The outline of this thesis is as follows. We start with the motivation, uh, go to problem formulation, and then introduction and background. At system design and validation, I am going to present my, uh, the mainly the work that I have done, and in the end, the conclusion and future work. In this thesis, we are focusing on um, human detection and tracking with ultra brightman radar for safety of humans working in proximity of vehicles, machines with moving parts, uh, or collaborating ro collaborative robots. Uh, we have mainly focused on enclosed industrial environments where uh, lack of light, fog, or dirt causes other technologies like cameras reducing functionality. There are other applications in, um, for human detection with ultraviolet radar. Uh, for example, pedestrian, pedestrian protection for auto autonomous vehicles. Um, through wall monitoring of uh, humans in police raid operations. And um, indoor positioning of humans in elder care and living assistance for Alzheimer patients. The <laughs> research goal is to evaluate a wireless system and to develop signal processing algorithms able to detect and localize humans in enclosed environment. The research question one is about the characteristics of the systems and drawbacks and constraints of the system. The research question two is about appropriate signal processing al algorithm that can be used for this specific sensor system. And the research question three, it's uh, about uh, if it is possible to use a phantom uh, in order to um, obtain control conditions for, uh, in, for studies and different measurements. As you can see in this uh, picture, the ultra-wideband uh, um, signal is, uh, has a wide frequency range and a low transmit signal power in uh, comparison to traditional narrowband signals. It, uh, the definition of ultra brightness signal is uh, uh, where the bandwidth is higher than 500 megahertz or its fractional bandwidth is higher than 0 0.2 uh, where fractional bandwidth is defined in this formula. The advantage of ultra wideband uh, signals are signal uh, centimeter range accuracy. Um, they have limited interfer interference uh, with other radio systems. Uh, they are less sensitive to multipath effects and uh, compared to narrowband signals. And um, they have the possibility or the capability to penetrate through walls. The true wall penetration can be a disadvantage where we don't actually want to uh, detect um, uh, humans in parallel corridors. Ultraviolet radar systems um, based on the excitation waves are um, divided into different categories. Uh, the three most prominent category is the frequency modulated continuous wave or FMCB radar. Uh, the FMCB radar uses uh, frequency ramp or chirp uh, for excitation in the excitation wave. Um, the pulse radar and the system that we have been using, uh, maximum length binary sequence or M sequence radar. Uh, which is a so, uh, which M sequence is a pseudo random binary sequence. Uh, code. Uh, um, a basic scheme of a M sequence radar it can be seen here. Uh, the M sequence generator generates the M sequence code. Uh, it's transmitted through the transmitting antenna, reflected from the target, 
and the reflected uh, wave is digitalized by the sampling, uh, by the uh, edit, uh, analog to digital converter, and is correlated with the sent signal to provide the distance to the target. There are different traits with uh, ultra-wideband radar, uh, different human traits uh, measurable with uh, ultra-wideband radar. Uh, we can measure the radar cross-section of the human with the radar, or we can measure some movements. Um, some external body part motions, such as walking and hand, arm, hand and arm movements, or some involuntary movement of internal body parts, such as heartbeat or the respiration activities. Ultra-wideband radar has been used in, um, in experimental studies uh, to detect humans in line of sight or behind obstacles. These studies mainly focus either on dynamic human detection or the static human detection. For example, in this uh, study, a uh, dynamic human has been detected in line of sight of the radar. The speed, uh, the amplitude, and some other factors are used to detect the human in this study. In this study, a static human detection in line of sight has been um, um, investigated. And um, in behind ob obstacles also it's possible to detect hu uh, dynamic humans. Uh, for example, the movement you can see with uh, some micro Doppler processing, uh, the movement of feet and torso is was possible to detect in this study. It's also possible to detect static humans uh, behind obstacles, for example, under rubble or behind walls. Um, in this uh, type of studies, mostly is focused on the respiration activities or the heartbeat activities and detect those kind of uh, movements. The hardware platform that we have used in this uh, thesis is a mon monostatic M-sequence ultra-wideband radar. Uh, the radar bandwidth is uh, uh, approximately uh, 2 gigahertz. It is designed uh, and commercialized by Radar Balaget uh, and is used uh, in primarily for real time uh, through wall monitoring of furnaces. The, the system contains a radar processing units, a wideband radar transceiver, and a pair of Vivaldi antennas. In this section, uh, system design and validation is presented, which is the work that I have been on. Uh, first, I will present the signal processing algorithms uh, we have developed for detecting detection of humans. Um, then uh, I will go through the, the uh, data acquisition application we have designed for, uh, for this system. And then I will go through the studies um, that uh, are we conducted in this research. Um, with this system. The signal processing starts with uh, some pre-processing. Um, the pre-processing that we have developed was, um, first we have used the uh, Hilbert transform. Hilbert transform is mainly the, uh, enveloping the signal and make it easier for the target uh, to represent the target uh, in the raw data signal. Uh, <coughs> And uh, another technique we have developed was automatic uh, noise reduction. Uh, it's an offline method. In this method, we have uh, uh, measured uh, um, the median of the all the radar sweep and then multiply it by sensitivity factor. And this um, we used, uh, is a fi we filter the data based on this. Uh, and it's caused that the low amplitude uh, signals doesn't um, um, represent a target. This, the following steps are, are, have been uh, done in uh, signal processing steps. Uh, first, we start with a 
clutter removal. Clutter is uh, everything in the radar, uh, radar signal, radar return signal than the human. And uh, we have uh, developed these methods. Uh, the clutter removal can be done in two different uh, but in two different ways. Once, when, it's pos when it, there is a possibility, it is possible to measure the background when the target is not in the vicinity of the radar. The background measurement um, can be, uh, is averaged or uh, the median of the background measurement has been taken. And uh, it is after, after this processing that this measurement is removed from the uh, raw data signal when, when, the, when the object is placed in the vicinity of the radar. When there is not this possibility, for example, when we have a move, moving target or we have a dynamic background, we use exponential averaging or adaptive uh, background subtraction. Uh, in exponential averaging, every background, uh, background signal is, um, is um, measured by alpha factor from the previous back background and the existing radar sweep. The adaptive background subtraction, uh, in adaptive background subtraction, alpha is a um, function of time and it's shown that it's better to, rem to remove the clutter when there is uh, small movements such as respiratory, respiratory activities. The detection step is when we are detecting the target. Um, in detection step, we can simply uh, look at the peaks of the target, of the raw data signal and the highest peak. Uh, sometimes the target doesn't produce the highest peak and uh, we use the integrals uh, of the under the peak and that, um, that can be big enough to be represent a target. Uh, one, uh, another um, the very common uh, detector is co uh, fa constant false alarm rate uh, detector, which is a C4, called C4 detectors. Uh, in CFR detector, uh, the probability of the false positive is uh, kept as a constant rate and uh, every cell is compared to the neighboring cells it, and some processing is used on that to see if that cell is a target or not a target. The lo when we actually detect the target, the localization of the target is quite easy because and the raw data signal uh, represents the time of arrival of the, of, the, uh, of the signal. And for example, you can see in, this, uh, uh, in the raw data signal, uh, for example, if this, this is a target, this is the antenna material coupling, and this distance between these two represents the distance to the target multiplied by two. And the tracking algorithm that we have developed uh, <coughs> is based on uh, the uh, speed of the target and the, the time that uh, speed, um, the amplitude, and the time that the target was represented in the in the radar return signal. The commercialized uh, uh, um, ultra-wideband radar that we have obtained. Uh, it comes with the Windows application. The Windows application has a drawback of um, for every new uh, signal processing um, algorithm we have to, we had to um, uh, code the signal processing algorithm in C, which is a time-consuming task. So we got the idea to to uh, to connect MATLAB directly, with, uh, we develop another signal uh, platform uh, that connect MATLAB directly to the uh, signal data and uh, to be able to use the MATLAB algorithms directly on the raw data signals. Uh, in the graphical user interface, it is possible to change the sequence of the algorithms and the parameters of the algorithms. In um, 
In the first study, we measured the Vivaldi antenna radiation pattern. Uh, the radiation pattern is a very important um, factor in radar measurements um, because we can um, understand the interaction between the radar and the object. Uh, uh, we have used the uh, great silker method for measurement uh, of the uh, radiation pattern. We have done the measurement in a semi anechoic chamber. Uh, in this uh, in this method, the measurement the me the measurement uh, the measurement antenna, which is the horn antenna, um, is kept at the fixed uh, fixed uh, place, and the antenna on the antenna on the test, which is the Vivaldi antenna, is uh, rotated around its uh, azimuth angle. 300 degrees, 360 degrees in five degrees of uh, steps. And that uh, provides a polar pattern. The Vivaldi antenna has uh, been um, rotated 90 degrees to, pro uh, to provide uh, um, uh, the horizontal polarization also. These are the results from this measurement. As you can see, there is not so much directivity as we expected uh, after the, uh, or um, we have done some um, simulation of the antenna. Um, but uh, the, there is more directivity as t at 2 and 3 gigahertz. Uh, and it's probably due to the cables and, the, and then the reflections from the ground. In the uh, study uh, number two, uh, we have measured or detect, start, uh, detected the static humans. Uh, this measurement is compared M sequence and pulse radar, uh, which are the two dominant uh, ultra wideband uh, systems for human detection. This is the measurement setup. Uh, a static human is standing in the line of sight of antenna at uh, 4, 8, and 12 meters uh, at the uh, corridor. Uh, and these are the results of these measurements. Uh, the measurements have been done over several, several mm, seconds. Uh, the background is removed from the raw data signal. Uh, and they're averaged and normalized. In the top row, you can see the results from the measurement from M sequence radar, and the top, in the bottom row, you can see the measurements from the pulse radar. The, the red dots representing the target, uh, standing at uh, 4, 8, and 12 meters. As it is possible to see, for the M sequence case, the, the highest peak belongs to the target even at the larger distances. But in, with pulse radar, this, uh, the targets um, um, is uh, and targeted noise is not possible to differentiate in the in at 12 meters, and uh, that's probably because of M sequence uh, code, because uh, it's a specific code that we're sending out, and then we correlate it with the return signals, and that provides a better resolution for the better uh, target uh, discernibility, uh, which comes at the cost of higher power consumption. In the third study, uh, the dynamic human uh, is detected. Uh, the dynamic human, um, we have done a we have done the study in two different environments. First, in the semi-anechoic chamber, and uh, then in a, in an uh, office. The human is walking towards the ra radar from 10 to 5 meters. First, the background of the measurements are uh, background is measured, uh, which is not actually. A, uh, I have written thermal noise there, but it's not thermal noise. Uh, um, the, the probability distribution of the background signal 
resulted in a log norm, norm, normal distribution. And as expected, there is a higher mean and variance mu and sigma in the office case. And then we can see this difference in the, after applying the signal processing algorithms um, in the results. There is a um, very high rate of false positive in the office case, which is, uh, can be due to the multipath effect and uh, um, also that the shadow targets that is um, um, caused by the signal processing. And the false negatives are also increased, which is mainly due to the uh, delay in the algorithm. And this study is answering research question one and research question two, partly. In study number four, and the backscattering of the, um, of the human torso and the phantom is compared. Uh, the backscattered signal um, is it depends on the material, size, shape, and the incident angle. A human is a very complicated target, and in every measurement we have a lot of variab variabilities. Making a phantom uh, helps us to apply the same condition for different uh, studies and measurements. It is shown that in measuring radar cross-section, the main contribution is from the trunk uh, and the torso of the human. We use the circular cylinder as a model for our phantom. Uh, this is the me measurement setup, uh, a PVC swage pipe, uh, approximate size of a human. Uh, it's filled with water, sand, and salt. Uh, and uh, then the measurement is repeated with a human sitting in the vicinity of the radar. Uh, we also did a measurement with, uh, um, with the metal plate uh, in, with the plastic protractor in different uh, um, transmit polarization of the transmitter in 0, 45, and 90 degrees polar polarization of the transmitter. Uh, these are the results from the, from the study. Uh, the, the blue line represents the empty pipe. It is possible that to see the front and back of the pipe with two different uh, distinct stops. And then we have the field pipe in red, and then we have the human in yellow. And these two tops might be the back of the head and back of the shoulders, they are in the same um, distance. Uh, the different polarization of the transmitter antenna uh, measurement uh, provided us with this result. Uh, at 0 and 45 degrees, we don't see so much difference, and in 90 degrees, the reflection is almost zero, which might be because of uh, the radar um, um, the, 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 the antenna, antenna radiation pattern is, uh, the radiation of the antenna in, the, in, that, in 90 degrees is much lower. Uh, the aim of study five was to be able to measure the respiration of, uh, of a human. Uh, we started with do a, uh, well, I, and this, this is answering actually research question three. I forgot to say that. Um, uh, in this uh, measurement, we have simulated the measurement, the, uh, the respiration of a human by moving a metal plate uh, by, uh, periodically by a stepper motor 90 degrees to the border side of the antenna. The results is uh, quite visible to see the uh, periodic moving, move, uh, movement of the aluminium plate. Um, we have done the same study with the, with the human. Unfortunately, I was not able to, uh, to see the 
the respiration activity this uh, this this clear uh, in that study it might have different reasons for example uh, that the the we have I have used VFFT and uh, and other uh, algorithms but uh, it might be because of the fluctuation of the um, amplitude of the data uh, a lot of uh, fluctuation of amplitude during the time during the time of measurement uh, in the conclusion we have seen that M sequence and pulse radar uh, we have compared these two systems uh, and uh, we saw that M sequence uh, radar is better suited for detecting static humans in larger distances with the price of the relative higher power consumption. M sequence radar shows a really good capability of dynamic human detection in short distances. Um, it was possible to detect and follow, track the humans uh, with the proposed signal, uh, signal processing algorithm. Um, we could detect the, uh, the breast, neck and head distance uh, by, the, by this system in the idealized condition. Uh, and um, we could, we could uh, produce an electromagnetically similar object to human uh, by making the human fa phantom this, uh, that I presented. The future work uh, can be different, um, can get the different paths. Um, first of all, we have to de determine and eliminate the origin of the high per percentage of the false positive. Um, and then, we, based on the my theory, uh, we got the idea that the, the best frequencies for the detecting of human body is between 70 to 200 megahertz. It provides a high, much higher dis, uh, discernibility for the human. And that might be another path we can take. With MIMO systems, with multiple input, multiple output systems, we can reveal more details about the targets. Uh, one other possible, pos possible uh, future path is a combination of the radar system and, and the cameras. Um, and also that in, uh, in the signal processing uh, path, we can, take, uh, we can look at the machine learning and artificial intelligence for detection, tracking, and the classification of the targets.